All right. Hello and good morning, everyone. Some of the uh, pre-call talk there at the very end. Yep, executives are all together. We are uh, having an amazing, encouraging time planning and prepping for the, the fall conference here at Ridgecrest. Uh, sadly, Jordan couldn't join us this weekend, so we're having to uh, make all the decisions. Not easy having all the power. Well, Randall's making most of them. That's true, too. Yeah. So if this year's conference sucks, it's called Randall made all the decisions. So we're just we'll saying that. There you yeah. go. Uh, no, seriously, we uh, even just talking this morning, uh, such an encouraging time to get together and start talking about the details of uh, how can we love men better this year? How can we serve? How can we uh, meet the needs of people? So we're super excited, but we thought, well, rather than uh, just the standard one of us doing the man up, why don't we all get together and we'll just kind of jump in and do some round table talk. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pray, get us started, get the conversation started. We're going to be in the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews chapter number four, and uh, just invite you guys to join us in prayer and we'll kick this thing off. Our Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to gather uh, with men that belong to you, men that are your sons, men that you have called out of this world into relationship. Um, I pray that we could be an encouragement to each other. I thank you for your word and that it powerfully speaks into our life. And uh, I just pray that this time is a time that you use for your purpose uh, in our life uh, for your kingdom. I pray all this in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, I want to dive in uh, and just look at a, a very familiar verse. I'm actually going to use the King James Version. It's a Hi, version. Man. Amen. It's a version I grew up on. So a lot of these key core verses, you know, that are foundational to our faith, I have memorized in the King James. I don't really know how to read it in any other text. But Hebrews 4.16, 4.16, very familiar verse where we are instructed, if you believe Paul wrote the book by Paul or whoever the authority figure was in the church at that time writing this, we are instructed, let us therefore come boldly, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. I wanted to start this morning by just looking at that first word even, let. Mm -hmm. There's, there's an allowance that takes place there that we're granted. And I think sometimes uh, we can just jump into a text or into a verse or into scripture and miss out on uh, the powerful context and uh, what the author's intent here is. And, and when you look at the context of this chapter and even this book, but the, the context being that in light of everything that Christ is and Christ has done, as our high priest, as uh, the one that went to the altar on our behalf as the sacrifice, there's an allowance granted to us as brothers in Christ, as sons of God, that says we have privilege, we have opportunity, we have the ability to come before the throne of grace. Uh, it's not just a option, it is our primary option. Yeah. And uh, I just think it's so powerful that we're granted that. And I, I know for a lot of you, this is probably true. It certainly is true in my life. That's not always my default. I don't always default to what I've been granted, what I've been allowed as, okay, this is step one. I'm going to go to the throne of grace first because that's where uh, Christ wants to meet me to start the process in forgiveness, restoration, Work walking with me through what he's wanting me to do, what he's asking of me. And I just think it's a powerful thing that we have that. Any any initial thoughts you guys have as far as what he's granted us? I mean, I just come back, I actually read this verse this morning, um, Romans 5, 1. And it says, mm -hmm. therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the verbiage uh, that is used. That man, when we put our faith in Christ, we have been declared righteous, not because of us, but because of him. And therefore, we can. Yeah. That opportunity for us to go bold into the throne. I just thought about that. That, Like I said, I just read that verse this morning. It's just in our reading plan. Uh, declared righteous by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And just to be reminded, once again, we talk about a lot. 
uh, goes back to our identity, right? When we truly remember who we are and because of what he's done, that man, it gives us that opportunity to let us, that, that it invites us in. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's almost an encouragement, and, and it really is, because you look back in 15 and you see, you know, talks about we don't have a high priest that's unreachable. Mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a God that we can reach out to, that we can, you know, call on, that we can go to. And then the let us is really, I feel like it's an invitation. Like it's mm -hmm. an, almost a challenge. Like, quit, quit running. And, and come to the Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 I love that it says you know it follows with let us, which means you know it's open for all. Yeah. And so uh, open for all those that will come. Yeah, that's good. I, I was thinking too. I, I don't want to just take this word by word the whole way through, but what you're saying there, even let us. There's there's a reality there that we're we're doing this collectively together. You know, our faith is individualized. We're able to have a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Christ. But he also expects us, and, and we talk about this a lot, the brotherhood aspect of sharing one another's burdens, confessing yeah. our sins to one another, uh, walking with one another, helping to equip one another. There's a real truth here that collectively we're, we're invited into this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that can be our last option too. Yeah. Instead of initially saying, hey, I got something going on. Can we together come to Christ with it and begin to talk through it and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through a brother, to speak through something that someone else might see in the text that they can share with us? But this, this notion of, well, I've got to do my best to work through it and figure it out, and uh, we miss out on something. Mm -hmm. We miss out on something. And, and here's what hit me the most about this text. And, and maybe you thought always thought this way or whatnot. When I read this verse, I immediately went to the only other time I remember anybody coming to the throne room of God. And I went right to Job 1. When Job talks about the sons of God coming before the throne presenting themselves. Now, I won't begin to try and get us on that tra rabbit trail <laughs> of what that's talking about, what that looked like, you know, an appointed time, how that calendar works. I don't know. We'll let Randall teach on that. There you yeah. go. Yeah. But the two things occurred to me. There was a collective coming of the sons of God before the throne, mm -hmm. people coming together before the throne, angels, whatever the spiritual realm and, and the sons of God meeting there, but then also I wrote down in my notes, let us not be outdone by the enemy when it comes to coming before the throne, because mm. Satan is the only other one mentioned coming before the throne. And wow. he comes boldly. Yeah. He comes with arrogance. He comes with pride. He comes with reeking confidence from a, a selfish perspective because he wants to destroy part of God's creation. And I thought to myself, I don't want to be outdone by the enemy with the access that God's granted us into his presence. And I wonder how much of our own lives we've been outdone. Man, it convicts me even just wow. saying that. I've been outworked, outdone by the enemy because he's boldly going before the throne saying, hey, do you see what your boy Travis did last night? Mm. Do you see what he's struggling with right now? And there he is before the throne accusing me. And I'm down here and Jesus is like, Come on up, like, come here. This is your opportunity to come before me. Let's work through this together. And man, I don't want to be outworked by that. Yeah, that, that's good, Travis. I've never pictured that like you just presented it, man, just, it to, just to think uh, how much, I mean, but you can take it and put it on this aspect too. Um, you look at other religions here, how we're outworked, right? The, I mean, yeah, Jehovah's Witness, man, they go out and work. At, uh, the Buddhists, they go out for their faith, for a faith that's not even real. Mm -hmm. There, there's nothing there. There's no substance. Yeah, and a lot of times they can make the enemies out working us just here on earth. It's like, yeah, Christianity. What is it? Because I, I see them over there. This other religions, man, they they seem way more disciplined. They seem way more moral mm -hmm. than these guys that are saying they're Christian men. And we get outworked here, but to think that getting out work to the throne room, which Jesus made available yeah. for us to come into boldly, as Randall's a while ago, we can go there more boldly right. than even Satan himself can go there because of what Christ has done. Yeah. 
Yeah. Good think, think of the reality of that too. You, you don't have to get on God's calendar to come before <laughs> the throne. I don't have to. I don't have to wait for the, the right time of year no. to show up. Because when that curtain was was torn in two, when, when our Savior bled and died, we were granted 24 hours a day instant access before the king of the universe, before the one that spoke creation into existence, before the one that took dirt and began to shape it and breathe life into it. He said, anytime you need anything, I'm here. Just show up and talk to me and share it with me. And uh, man, that's powerful. Yeah, that that rocks my world in in a in a powerful way because what what happens is you you talk about other people being committed and and being active in their faith and being so why is it we're not? Mm -hmm. What are what are some reasons you guys think that maybe you know I, certainly we uh, I think we forget who we are yeah. sometimes we forget that we are the sons of God that we are adopted family that that we are not citizens of earth but that our our natural belonging now is in that throne room. Yeah, I think it boils down to because it's freaking hard, man. It's hard, and, and our flesh likes to be comfortable. Yeah, and we get used to just being comfortable, doing our checking our boxes. I read my Bible. I went to church. I mean, we talked about this so many times, but yeah, we don't see no change, so we got to keep talking about it because we get comfortable and just living our life mm -hmm. instead of being reminded that this life is not my own. It, there's been a high price that's been paid. And uh, I, asked, I asked Liberty yesterday, you know, man, how's your personal fruit uh, mm -hmm. in your personal life? I'm talking about your ministry, your personal ministry. You're sharing your faith. You going out. What what does that fruit look like in your workplace, in your family? It, in, when, you're, when you're just out and living your life, what is your personal fruit? Because the Bible tells us that, man, if Jesus is in you, Jesus said it when he's talking about the, the vine and the branches. He said, if you're plugged into me, there's going to be much fruit. Yeah. yeah. Jesus said, there will be much fruit because I don't produce the fruit. Christ produces the fruit through me. But I mean, so that, that's the question. But man, producing fruit takes work, man. Pruning the branches. I mean, making sure everything's right to produce good fruit. It's hard freaking work. And I just think, just, just being flat honest, we got a bunch of passive, lazy, CC men. Yeah. And, and I've been guilty of being that. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, trust me, I'm preaching to myself in Randall morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's love It's hard to stay at. It. How about you, Randall? Any thoughts come to mind as far as well, why why don't we take better advantage of what we've been granted? I think because we we still have just a mixed up understanding that God is attainable. And mm. I mean, the the author of this passage is not writing this passage to God saying, "Will you let us come to you?" He's writing this passage to men, women, and children and saying, we should go. We need to go. This is mm -hmm. urgent. And we don't have an urgency with our faith. Mm -hmm. Everything is, you know, we live in such a, I'll get to that tomorrow kind of world with that mentality. And, and I don't even want to chalk it all up as laziness. I think absolutely we struggle, struggle with laziness. I think we have good intentions. I think every man on this call probably has really good intentions and wants to lead their family. Um, the problem is we just keep putting it off. And what happens is we put it off, we put it off, we put it off, it never gets done. And so, man, I, I think a lot of it is just, we're just mixed up in our thinking. And, yeah. and I mean, you know, the, the way we're raised is be a man, suck it up, get the job done. This is opposite of that. This is saying, come yeah. fall on your face. And, and the boldness here is not a boldness of, hey, look at me, look what I can do coming before the throne. It's, hey, I'm going to go lay my life down before the throne of God because I want to live under that grace. And and so there's humil a humility aspect as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how can you be bold but also have a heart of humility at the same time? I think is, yeah. is, is another kind of segue question on for that. Yeah, and with that, I think we have to ask ourselves the question, and I, I present this question to you guys. Do you trust, do you truly trust that he not only wants to meet with you, but that he's good? Mm -hmm. yeah. when, I, when I think about coming with boldness and humility before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, 
there's an aspect there that I hesitate to do that, I think, because of a lack of trust on my part. Maybe he's not going to do what I want him to do. Maybe he's going to consider some of the things I have done, and we'll have a whole different conversation. You know, regardless of what political party you fall into, I think if any of us today, if we're honest, if any of us uh, were, were given, you know, received a phone call and said, hey, we're going to fly you out to D.C., and the president of the United States wants to meet in the Oval Office with you. All the chief of staff will be there and all the cabinet members, everyone that has influence and authority and power is going to be there. And uh, we want to meet with you and hear what's going on and, and what we can do. There would be an element inside of us, regardless, again, of which parties in, in office or anything, there would be an element where there's some there's some fear there's some oh no kind of moments, right? There would be a little bit of trepidation of what is this going to mean? What's this going to look like? But it also would come down to this question of trust. Like, do I really trust that the authority before me is going to meet my need and do listen to me and that my opinion matters and that he really wants to hear from me? And because here's the thing, if I truly believe God is good, like God is good and that God is for me, not that he doesn't have other elements of his character. He's God of wrath, God of judgment. I'll stand on that all day long. But if I believe that he is good and that he is for me and that he wants to meet with me, if I truly believe that at my core, that should impact what I do when it comes to coming and going before that throne. Yeah. I, I think it boils down to a lot of, of trust because if there's not trust. I'm not going to, if I don't trust you, I'm not going to want to share my burden with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If yeah. I'm not confident in what your advice is going to be or how you're going to handle it, or I know what he's saying. If I go to Eric with this issue, Eric's going to say, you got to do one, two, and three. And I don't want to do one, two, and three. So <laughs> I, I don't think he has my interest in mind. I think he's trying to protect himself. Whatever it might be, I'm not going to go to him. That's just the bottom line or yeah. Randall or anybody, right? We're all that way with people. And I think sadly we can attach that to Christ mm. when he says come yeah, share. If, we, if we served a God that told us exactly what we wanted to hear when we wanted to hear it that wouldn't be much of a God mm. no and and you're exactly right. right that wouldn't you know if we had brothers that told us exactly what we wanted to hear when we wanted to hear it that wouldn't I wouldn't consider that a brother yeah um and so I think you're spot on Travis that's good yeah oh, I think too you know we hear that come boldly into the throne room I think a lot of guys take that, that I can come boldly with my commands, with my demands on what I want. Yeah. Uh, when I, I really believe, if we look into that text, it's coming boldly with my concerns, with my fears, with my, that I can be open, just like you said, I can be vulnerable yes. because I can trust him. It ain't boldly I'm coming in telling God what I need and what I want, and uh, yeah. but it's coming in there. I can come boldly, openly, and just be who I am. Yeah, because absolutely. I can because I can trust him. And yeah. that's that boldly. It's not that coming in pointing my finger at God. It's coming in bowing my knees before him mm -hmm. uh, and having that just that is it's a different kind of boldness, man. Yeah. When when I've got trust and, and I know we've got that in brothers on here, I've got that with the brothers where I can come to Travis and say, Man, I'm I'm freaking struggling with this dude. Yeah. I need some help. And that takes boldness to do that. Yeah. Because that's a yeah. lot of trust because I mean you know, if I share something with Travis, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping and trusting that Travis is going to give me good biblical sound advice and not just go start gossiping to everybody else about me and right. then start destroying me from behind. And that's the kind of boldness we can have with God because I can trust him. Right. I can trust him with everything. And the great part about it, he already knew about it. Yeah. I mean, it ain't like I'm going to go in there and shock God when I right. let him know on what I've done, right? It's right. not going to be a shock factor with him. Uh, but man, that, that openness that he's made available so we can, but he wants that relationship side of it to say, I want you to be able to share that with me yeah. because I want to carry that for you. And because tr trust leads to submission. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's good. Right? Yes. Trust leads to submission. You can't have submission without trust. That's if good. you're married, you're going to learn that real quick if you haven't yet. <laughs> trust leads to submission and submission leads to peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Peace is the, the father of submission. And so what we're talking about, and I believe what the writer here in Hebrews is talking about, there's this real element that says, when I can submit my heart to God, regardless of the details and the circumstances of where I find myself, there's a reality that says, 
God is good. God is for me. God desires me to come to him and meet my need. And so I'm going to submit. I'm going to give whatever it is to him. And when we can do that with confidence, there is a peace that we get his peace that passes anything that we can begin to understand and comprehend, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's this beautiful transaction that he brought uh, on our behalf. And uh, that brings back to this boldness aspect. And I'll use this as an illustration and then give you guys some time to wrap up any thoughts you may have. But there's an element that, uh, like with my kids, for example, they my boys learned to ride his bike, one of them. Uh, seven years old. I got another one that's learning how to throw the football. And there's an aspect in their life when they look at their dad, they think, because they don't know a whole lot of other experiences, they look at me and think, dad is the expert when it comes to gripping a football and throwing it properly. Mm -hmm. Dad is the expert when it comes to learning how to ride a bike. He knows how to get up on it, how to be balanced, how to take off, how to position your feet. And so they come to me with not just confidence, but an attitude that says, you've got to help me do this. I can't do it apart from you. And there's a true like joy they experience when dad's like, absolutely, let's go do this. You want to go do it right now? Come on, I'll help you and we'll work on this and you'll get it. Yeah. That's that mentality. I'll use even another quick example. You know, one of our kids, one of our foster kids recently punched out one of our windows. And so my wife thinks that because I've stupidly figured out how to do a few things on YouTube, therefore I can do everything in the world. And so rather than paying the money for a handyman and everything else, go do it. She says, well, why don't you just look up some videos and figure out how to replace double pane glass yourself? You can get all the products and, and all this stuff and go and do it on your own. There's a part of me that says, yeah, I could have tipped that and I'll probably end up severing an artery or something along the way <laughs> with that glass. But if I knew, for an example, that my next door neighbor or someone in my community or one of my friends was like, dude, I do that for a living. I'm the one that invented the technique and the process. Not only will I go there and do it with you, but if you let me, I'll do it for you. Yeah. You just come along with me and, and watch what I do. Yep. That's good. Would we not say, yo, <laughs> I'm all in with that guy, right? Yeah. Or would we foolishly say, yeah, I appreciate that, but I've never tried this and I want to just colossally mess it up on my own and <laughs> do some damage in the process. Now you look at me and say, Travis, you're an idiot. What are you doing, man? Like, here's everything you need is right there, right next to you in the cul de sac. Like, go get that guy and get it done. But yeah, we do the exact same thing yeah. with Christ. Here's this beautiful offer in 416. Come here and you will find grace and mercy to help in all your needs with yeah. everything you're going through. I love it for every time of need. And yet there are times where we're just like, mm, I don't think I'm going to go to the expert on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and I'm working. Travis, the throne of grace is not a place that we visit from time to time. Mm, yeah. I mean, and it's not even a lifestyle that we attempt to live. You know, we, we boldly come into the throne of grace, like you said, and it's a, it's a new life. I mean, he, he's giving us a new life, a new, a new way to live. Like it's, it's total, just complete opposite, complete flip. Like it's old is gone, you know, new is here. And unfortunately we spend so much time, in the new life, trying to live like the old, that, that we're missing what's right in front of us. Like you're saying, I mean, we may have that neighbor, like, and I love what you said, that neighbor, not who knows how to do it, but the neighbor who invented the technique. Yeah. I mean, we have, the throne of grace is Jesus. Yeah. I mean, just point blank. And, and I mean, this verse, it's, <laughs> you know, it's all about him and it's all about us coming to him and what he's done in our lives. Yeah. And, and what he's going to continue to do. And so I think we look at it, we need to look at it as not just a place we go, not a state of mind, but instead, man, we should live under that umbrella of grace forever. Yeah. And, and so obviously hold each other accountable, but man, how, how much does the Father love us that he's willing to show us grace even in our ugliness? Mm. Um, that's Even good. after the fact, I mean, that's just 
crazy to me. Yeah, yeah. Where, where it comes back, you know, where it tells us in Romans, God proved his love towards us mm -hmm. that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. I mean, that I, I love it because it, it's another invitation right there, you know, just like we talked about that let us, that invitation to come in. But he says, he says, why? So we can receive mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, there's gifts here. Yeah. It's like it's like waking up on Christmas morning and your kids not wanting to go to the Christmas tree. They want to go to the dinner table. You know, their, their gifts are here. Yeah. You want to go to, man, the gifts are available. They're there. You're invited to come and receive. Mm. And it's there, but how many times we don't. I'll figure this out on my own. Yeah. Yeah. And, and such a great, and I got to say this. Your kids have not seen your army fail bike riding to think that you're the master <laughs> of bike riding. So, uh, yeah, I'm just saying they haven't seen that video yet. Have yes. They? Okay. Right. Army feel popular. Yeah. Um, so, guys, we're going to wrap it up. If you guys have some, some feedback or questions or thoughts you want to throw out, I'll let you do that. But don't miss the overall thought of this. And it's not just so you can hear three, three friends talking or three ministry leaders talking. The overall heartbeat this morning is God is extending to every one of you, whether live or via the playback, every one of you and every one of us, an invitation to not just come, like Randall said, on occasion or when it gets really tough, but an invitation to live mm -hmm. in the presence of God, to find that help that we need, regardless of what life is throwing at us. And one of the coolest things in the world, a conversation I had with my, my nine-year-old daughter this past week, as she's trying to understand the new heaven and the new earth and what it's going to be like. And she said, well, will we live in one more than the other or what? I said, well, you've got a lot of great questions, but here's the beautiful thing. We can be with Jesus whenever we want, and that's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. And it blew her mind. It was like, we get to hang out with Jesus whenever we want? And then conviction set in, and it's like, <laughs> he offers us that now. Maybe yeah. not how we want it, but he offers us that now. Let us be men that are bold enough and courageous enough to say, yeah, I'm going to live that way. Uh, not as a second option, but as my only option. To yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. If you got a question, comment, thought, hand up. Otherwise, uh, we'll give you just a couple of quick announcements, and we'll go ahead and wrap up. You know, I've, I've watched enough Netflix. If I get the chance to go to the uh, White House, I'm going because I know where all the cool stuff is. <laughs> oh, Lord, mercy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Netflix is an, an accurate no, rendering. Night Night Agent is real, Travis. Okay. Night, night all right. Let's uh we're facing getting sideways here. Hey, hey guys, so like I said, we just got a couple minutes. Don't see no hands up. So we'll just kind of wrap up. Uh, we value your time. Thank you guys for joining us every week live. Uh, all the guys, thank you for catching the playback. We know we got a lot of guys that, that grabbed that. Uh, man, we're excited um, about the conference this year. Of course, we got a bunch of meetings today uh, where our schedule is slam packed, trying to get everything in before we get out of here. Uh, but we have uh, man, a lot in store. If you can make it, to Ridgecrest, August 22nd, 23rd, 24th. I want to highly encourage you to be there. Um, man, we're so excited just about what God's doing. It's amazing when we get in a room like this. I mean, Travis talking about it just this morning. I mean, when we get in here and we start talking, uh, it excites us. We're like, can August hurry up and get here? Yeah. Uh, because yeah. we, we get to kind of see, you know, kind of what's coming and, and we're excited for that. So guys, if you haven't got registered, Go get registered. Be intentional to come be a part of uh, this year's conference. We, we hope to see you there. Bring some guys with you. Uh, we're expecting this year to be, you know, God just continues to grow the ministry. Like I said, we, we're just trusting him with it. It's word of mouth. You guys come and God changing your lives and you go and bring some more guys. So invite some guys to come be with you this year. We hope to see you that weekend. Of course, uh, man, if you're not part of our band community, go over there, jump into the community there, take this conversation over there this afternoon and uh man we just uh, so appreciate you guys so with that being said randall you want to close us out in prayer brother yeah let's pray father we love you lord we just thank you so much god just all that you've done and all that you're going to do thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to live under that umbrella of grace lord we're just so grateful that you're willing to uh, give your son your perfect son for us uh, just wretched rotten sinners Lord, I just ask that every man on this call, every man listening to playback knows that they don't have to live in shame. Lord, they don't have to live in guilt. But Lord, they can live in grace. Mm. Lord, that doesn't mean that they accept their sin and they live with their sin, but Lord, that means that they deal with their sin.
because they give it to you and they fall on their face before you. And so, Lord, I just pray that you be with men and will be with us as we continue to plan this weekend. And, Lord, I just pray that you just move in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, guys, keep fighting. Win today. And as always, let's go light it up for the King. Love you, man.